populators, we now have to group the cells together. We can group cells in combinations of one cell on its own, two cells together, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, and so on, to the power of two. This allows us then to provide a minimized expression for the overall, um, the overall system that we're, we're creating. So in their Carnot map, we can group adjacent cells together. We couldn't, for example, group these cells together because of the zero that's present. We could group these cells together but we also have to maximize the amount, the amount of cells that are in a group. So in this case, that would be the maximum that we could create. We couldn't, for example, create a group of three because it's not a power of two, or a group of six, even if that was a one there, uh, we, we wouldn't be allowed to create that, group them together. We can also group adjacent cells that roll around or wrap around. So this, this table wraps around. So this edge, if you can imagine, is connected to this edge. So if there, were, if there were two cells here, let's for, say, for example, there was a 1-1 one, one there, we could group these two cells and these two cells together to create uh, a, a new group. In our case, there's not uh, a 1-1 one, one here. So this is the, the, the grouping that we have to perform. We can also overlap groups together, and you should overlap groups to maximize the, the coverage of, a, of, of, your, of your groupings. So here's the first obvious grouping that we together we will color this and say well that's one of the groupings we've got four cells grouped together and there's nothing to wrap around there's no more adjacent cells that can be included in the group. We also have another group here. Now you can see that this one here is present in both this group and this group but that's fine. So we can have two groupings that overlap. So just uh, I'll just group them together and bear in mind that the this one still remains within the uh, blue grouping as well. So that's that's it covered. We've covered all of our all of our states in our in our Carnot map. So we this is our minimized expression. It is possible that we would also have terms like a don't care term where it doesn't matter whether it's a zero or one. If that's the case, we can we can use it if we want to or we or if we don't want to we don't have to use it. So there is a possibility of a don't care term as well. So, what have we got? Well, our final expression, f now equals um, the sum of products. So, we'll, let's have a look at our particular grouping here. We can see, well, if we look at the blue grouping, which is these four cells together, we look for what has not changed uh, along the two, the rows and the columns. So, if we look here along the a, b uh, column, we can see, well, a is present in its inverted and non-inverted case, but b is only present in its positive or non-inverted case. So this means that we've got B is part of our uh, is part of one of our uh, products. If we look at our, our row for the same blue grouping, we can see well 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So we can see that C is present in its non-inverted case in both of these uh, columns, but D changes, so therefore we don't include D. So this means that we've got B C and that, that describes the blue grouping. So B and C is the, is the grouping um, of, the blue group, of the blue group. We also have the green, and this is a sum of products, so we can say or. Um, and then we have our green grouping. And we can see, well, let's look at here again. What doesn't change? Well, we see that the A uh, doesn't change, but the B does. So therefore, B is excluded. And we look now along this uh, row here, and we see that, well, the A changes, sorry, the C changes, but the D doesn't change. So we have um, this green grouping described as AD. And that's it, we've included all of our cells. So the minimization of this particular circuit is BC or AD, and that's the minimized version. So Carnot maps are a very efficient way of reducing quite a large number of states down, providing you get successful grouping. It is possible that there is no minimization possible to Carnot map, but at least then you're sure that you have the minimum expression available for you. So this has provided a formal and quick way of reducing our, our minimization. It means now that our implementation only requires two AND gates and one OR gate. Now that we have our minimized function f equals ad or bc, we can take that function and implement it using our chips. So 
Here I've got my, uh, my four switches, uh, we'll call them A, B, C, D, and we have, our, um, we have them in pull-down configuration, so you can see the resistors pulling down to ground. Uh, the outputs of these switches, or the values of these switches, are these grey lines here, so this is A, B, C, and D, the grey wires. And then we have our, our um, uh, 7408, our AND gates, and this you can see we've powered to high and uh, uh, ground. Uh, we have our, our uh, voltage regulator here making sure we're getting 5 volts and you can see it's, it's powering this LED here just to indicate that we currently have power. Uh, then we have our OR gate. So the output of our AND operations goes into the input of our OR gate. So you can see here that the first function is F equals AD. So A and D. So you can see A and D. D going into the inputs here, A and D, and the output here, the blue wire, is going into the first pin of the OR gates, which is the input of the um, first OR gate. And, and also we have our B, C, is the input to our second AND gate, and you can see the second blue wire going in as the second input to our OR gate. The green wire coming out then is our output and we're using this to uh, drive an LED just to indicate when the states are, are high. So again, the, the problem was to design a circuit so that the uh, output, the LED is on if um, the outermost switches are pressed or the innermost switches are pressed or three switches are pressed, any three switches are pressed at the same time or all four switches are pressed at the same time. So you can see we're, we're, it's working so far in that it's not supposed to be lit if there's no switches pressed. So we'll try one switch. I've pressed each one of the switches and there's no output, which is correct. Um, I can also try the two switches on, the, on, the, on this side and you can see we get no output. On the two switches on this side, we get no output. So again, we were supposed to design it that if the two outermost switches were pressed at the same time, we should get an output and you see we do or if the two innermost switches were pressed at the same time, we get an output, and we do. And then we can try three switches. So uh, there's three, and the, the second tree, or if we try different, if we try, if, if we try um, a different tree, you can see that we get uh, working there. Or if we try all four together, we get a perfectly functioning circuit. The second part of this question asks you to take the expression that you'd implemented using AND and OR gates and to implement it using NAND gates only. Now straight away as soon as you're asked to implement uh, an expression like this to NAND gates or NOR gates, the first thing you should think about is De Morgan's theorem. Now De Morgan's theorem um, looks like this and this is the simplification. You've seen De Morgan's theorem elsewhere but here's the basic rule for De Morgan's theorem. If you have an expression a, b with a bar over the entire expression, it's very important that's a full bar over the entire expression, you can break this bar and in effect all you have to do is invert the sign, convert the sign from, from, an, from an AND to an OR and that then gives you a NAND conversion to two negative OR uh, components. So a, b bar as with a bar, you break the bar and you change the operator. Similarly if you have a, a nor b, well then you break the bar and then you convert the, oper the, you convert the operator from an or operator to an and operator, so it becomes a negative and. Okay? So that's, that's the basis of, of De Morgan's theorem. Now on first inspection it doesn't look like, well, we don't have a bar to break. So the first thing we have to do is get a bar in place and this is quite straightforward. If we have an expression f, um, well, f inverted and inverted again is exactly the same as f. So you can say in effect that f is equal to f double bar. So that allows us to write, um, well, we can write our expression uh, like this. We can say, well, f equals ad uh, or BC as before and put a double bar over the entire expression. And it's very important that you note that there's a double bar over the entire expression. Now we can apply De Morgan's theorem quite straightforwardly and that allows us to break the bar and the, 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 the lower bar. So if we break the lower bar we can see that the lower bar breaks and um, the operator changes. So the, 
the, the OR operation becomes an AND operation. So you can see that this is A, D, sorry, A, NAND, D, B, NAND, C, and then the overall output of those two NAND operations becomes um, a, a NAND operation as well. So you can see now that it's possible to build this circuit using three NAND gates only. So we've gone from an OR gate and AND gates to a situation where we only need NAND gates. So I also asked you to implement this uh, circuit using NAND gates only. And as you can see from the minimization, um, it works out quite um, straightforwardly. We can, use, we, can, we can get by with only three NAND gates. So the, the function becomes uh, F equals a NAND D NAND uh, sorry and NAND B NAND C. So the first the first NAND gate is A NAND D and the second NAND gate is B NAND C. So we take the output of that and then we apply it to a third NAND gate so it becomes the um, the overall NAND of those two functions. So here you can see I've just wired up the, the, the NAND gates uh, VCC and ground. I've connected up um, the yellow to A, the white to D, the blue to, to B, and the green to C. And this gives us our, um, you can see here, this, the, the, first, the first two inputs, the yellow and the white, go into the first two pins of the NAND gate. The third pin is, is this little green wire here, which goes as the first input into the third NAND gate. And then into the second NAND gate, pins uh, 4 and 5, the blue and the green go in there, and the grey wire then becomes the, the second input into the third NAND gate. Finally, we have a resistor coming from the output of the third NAND gate, which then goes to ground. And you can see here that we get the exact same outputs for all states. So you can see for no input, we have uh, no lights. Press one of each of the LED of buttons, no output. We press the outermost uh, the two uh, buttons on this side, no output. The two on this side, no output. Now, for our positive state, for our, our, our high state, press the two outermost buttons, you can see that both LEDs light. The two innermost buttons, you can see both LEDs light. And similarly for any three buttons then, um, that we try, and then all four buttons together. So you can see that the two circuits are exactly equivalent. On this side, we have only used three NAND gates, and on this side, we're using OR and AND. Sorry, OR and AND gates. If we were asked the question to implement the same expression using NOR gates only, well, we would follow a similar procedure. In this case, we we can we can look at the expression and we can say, well, uh, let's invert the inver individual components of F. So AD double bar is equal to AD, so we haven't changed um, the function, the, the, the output or the way this, this uh, particular expression behaves. So by putting in a double inversion under each of the initial components. Then we can apply um, De Morgan's theorem as before, break the bar, you can see AD, break the lower bar, becomes A nor um, D, and we've got still got the upper bar, the inversion there. Uh, and we're still we're still not quite finished. It might look like we're finished, but you see then here in the middle we've got an OR operation, not a NOR. We've got an OR operation, so we still have to finish this off. And the easy way to do this, well, you should have an idea from before, is you can see well we can just add in a double inversion. Now the inversion itself it's relatively straightforward to create an inverter from a single NOR gate. So you can see in this case we've got. Um, and NOR operation inverted inputs, so we have to invert the inputs, and we've also got a double inversion, so we need quite a number of NOR gates for this particular implementation.